the cloud. Okay, so welcome everyone. My name is Andrew Turgeon. I'm the Associate Director of International Student Advising at Green River College. And we want to thank you so much for joining us today for our alumni chat. We have five um, panelists with us today, two who have uh, transferred from Green River College to the University of Minnesota, and three who have uh, finished at Green River College and transferred to the University of Washington, Seattle. So before we get into our questions, I want to have um, each participant introduce themselves. So uh, we will start with Kai. Kai, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, hi everyone. My name is Kai and um, I'm currently studying in Uni the University of Washington, Foster School of Business. I graduated Green River College December of 20, tw 2020. And um, I in Green River College, I was an IT help desk assistant and also I worked with the peer mentor group. Um, right now, I am working for UW Medicine in Seattle Cancer Care Alliance as a um, fiscal assistant. Thank you so much, Kai. Akar, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Akata Kao, and everyone call me Ace. Currently, I'm in, in University of Minnesota and majoring in computer science. From Green River College, I've graduated in June 2019, I believe. And in there, I was working as international student ambassador until I graduate. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. And John, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hey everyone, my name is John. I'm currently a senior student at the University of Minnesota. I'm also majoring in computer science. And I graduated from Green River in June 2019. And during my time at Green River, I worked uh, both as a math tutor at the Math Learning Center and also an IT help desk. And you, some of you might have seen me in, like, in the library a lot. Thank you, John. Thank you for your introduction. Sophie, can you introduce yourself next, please? Hi everyone, my name is Sophie and I'm a senior year majoring in biochemistry at UW. Um, I graduated Green River in June 2019 and when I was there, I was working as the student advising assistant alongside with um, Andrew, who's a great boss. Um, and currently I am an undergrad researcher at UW Medicine. Thank you, Sophie. You were also a great employee. Shout out to you. And finally, Saki, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Saki. I'm a senior majoring in journalism at the University of Washington. And I graduated from Green River College June 2020. And then at, at the Green River College, I was working for the student life. And then I was creating like events every Tuesday. And then currently I'm just writing like articles, interviewing people for my journalism work. Awesome. Thank you so much, Saki, for that introduction. So we've now introduced our five panelists. So I am going to ask them a series of uh, six questions. Uh, most of them were generated by our current uh, Green River International students. Um, and I'll have just a few panelists answer each of those questions. And then after that, if there is anyone attending the presentation, they can ask their own questions as well. So we'll start with the first question, uh, which was posed to us by one of our current uh, Green River International students. Um, they ask, how competitive do you feel it was to get into your university? So Saki, would you like to answer this question? Yes. Um, so I'm studying in University of Washington and then I felt really competitive applying for the UW because when I saw the data of like transfer, like international transfer student, and then I saw that like less than half of the students who applied for the UW actually got into UW. So the statistic like really shows that like not many international students are like getting in. So I felt it's really like difficult for me to like get into your job but like I know and also I know there are some like international students who apply for the UW, but like they got rejected but apply again 
next year and then they actually got in so i guess like as as long as like you try and try again and then apply apply again and then polish your like personal statement you can i think get into utah eventually and then also of course like gpa plays an important role like in applying in getting into like any of the universities in the united states but i feel that utah like value personal statement I don't say like more than GPA, but like at least they value like personal statement a lot. So if you like put like put effort into making like good personal statement, I think you have a like great chance of getting getting into your job. Yeah. Yeah, I think I agree with you there, Saki. UW Seattle definitely has a holistic review type of admissions and does seriously look at your application essay. Uh, your personal statement. I have a follow up and Saki, you can answer this or anyone, any of the panelists can answer this. Do you feel that given how competitive it is, do you feel like the actual level of work at your university is equivalent, right? So you had this idea of how difficult the school might be, how super smart the students might be is your um was your idea actually match the reality of your academic experience at your school i say yes because like i see students like i see so many students like studying really hard i don't say like people in green river are not studying hard but like i see so many students like actually like putting so much effort and then like before the pandemic like so many students were studying in the library like all the time. And then also like classes are actually really hard. And then students are constantly talking about like study stuff. So mm. it matches it matched my like ex expectation. Yeah. And uh, for either one of my Minnesota students, do you do you feel like your idea matches the reality? Is it harder? Is it easier? What do you think? Either one of you could answer it was harder than I expected, like comparing to the ranking or the information about the school. So uh, like for CS, like before we, I transferred here, like I looked up the ranking for the CS program here at the U and like it's ranked like top 30 in the US. And like, but when I actually got to take the CS courses there, like the course load that we have, like the, the amount of knowledge that we receive, I thought it should have been ranked like top 20 or higher because like, we learned a lot like new stuff, like the course load is like really heavy, even though it's just like computer, like we spend like some semester, like five or four, four or five classes only on CS and like everything's like a very heavy. I think like compared to the ranking should be, the ranking should be higher. Thank you, John, for sharing. So yeah, it seems like expectations were with versus reality were a little different. Yeah, um, I got a bit shocked during my first semester here. I totally understand. I think that comes kind of nicely to our next question, um, which uh, both of you, both Akar and Lam or John will answer, which is how did GRC prepare you to be successful at your new school? And how do you think Green River could have prepared you better for transfer? So Ace, why don't we start with you if you don't mind? Okay, so um, from my perspective, Green River College, like they provided me with a lot of many essential, uh, essential skills, like how should I say, um, how to be successful in the class and my leadership skills and my social skills, like how to make friends, how to get more involved in the schools. And not only that, uh, in my classes, most of my projects are done in a groups. And from that group, I learned how to be work effectively and more communicate effectively with the people in the group to read to the goal that we are assigned to and yeah and you know from the green river college experience like it made me more mature than how i was uh, originally when i was attending the green river college and it was like a stepping stone toward my future which i want to be really successful so yeah and uh, ice was there anything you felt like um Gosh, you know, Green River never told me that, or my advisor at Green River never told me that. I didn't even think about that when transferring. Oh, not really. 
Yeah, my advisor Jackie, she really helped me in every way as possible. Yeah, she told me everything that I want to know. Okay, great. I'm sure she'll be very happy with that. Um, and John, how about you? How was your, um, how do you feel Green River prepared you and could we have done anything better for your transition to Minnesota? Yeah, sure. So uh, uh, I think Green River helped me a lot to like prepare myself for the new life at the University of Minnesota because thanks to the partnership between Green River and the U. So I remember during our last quarter at Green River, like there was the advisor from the U, like University of Minnesota actually came to Green River, like to do a short talk to like, Perfect uh, new student that will come to the university, and like they really give us like a great overview on how the life will be there. So I feel like I've been prepared better thanks to like just like that trip coming to Green River, and also like since like Green River has like a smaller size uh, class, I feel like it prepared me with a better foundation coming to like my junior and senior year, because I feel like uh. Right now, like I see like most freshman class and summer class here, like we every class has like 150 students each section. So it would be hard for like, any student who don't understand anything to connect with the instructor to like uh, like learn more or like uh, get help on that. But like the relationship I built with the instructor at the university and like the class size helped me like learn like the most out of the uh, like classes there. And like these knowledge like really apply to my junior and senior level class. Uh, yeah, and like uh, there was, I was just like one regret that I wish like I would knew earlier from Green River was that like, it's just about course load specifically like the, the transfer class. So I didn't know that like the University of Minnesota like they require us to take like biology class. So like instead of taking biology in Green River, I spent like to my quarter just taking chemistry. And like when they audit my course, like they just don't count that. And I now I need to like take a new bi biology class just like to graduate. So like mm. there's like that tiny thing that like, if there were, was like a transfer plan specifically for the US of Minnesota, it would help us more on this. It's just a matter of saving time, I think. Yes, I totally understand. I think John, a lot of our students say that, um, you know, they really appreciate the small class size um, and at Green River and feel like they do have those connections. Um, and then sometimes, I'm not sure if your biology class was like this at Minnesota, but sometimes, you know, you're then asked to, maybe you have a general education class that wasn't completed at Green River or something, and that you're then asked to go into a kind of an intro course at your new university that might be really, really large. And that can be kind of intimidating. So yeah, I totally understand that. Um, and thank you for sharing you know, about the, the transfer plan. I think that's a really good point. So kind of on that topic of academic transition, uh, we have a couple of panelists who are going to um, answer this question, which is just describe your academic transition to your new school. How did your classes transfer and how easy was it to adjust to your courses at your new school? Were your courses different from the ones you took at Green River? And finally, how did COVID-19 affect your academics? So uh, we will start with Sophie. Sophie, would you mind responding to this question? Yeah, sure. Um, so transferring to UW, it was a very easy process because once you send in the transcript, the school will basically do everything for you. They'll assign the classes that get transferred and they'll send you an email once everything is done. So you can go ahead and check that on your My UW. Um, you have to double check to see if everything is all right because sometimes they might make some errors in the grade. So um, you can just email your advisor for that. Um, transferring was quite smooth because when I was there, there, it was still in person. So there were still events, um, orientation, and the ISS sent out a lot of emails to help students with uh, their questions. So definitely uh, very easy. And um, courses at school, I would say it's 
much, much harder because for my uh, courses in my major, everything was graded on a curve. So it's not like where every like 95% is a 4.0, but rather students in the class have to fight each other to get the grade that you want. So like the top 5% would be 4.0 and the next would be 3.9. So it's very competitive. And um, for other classes, the class size is huge. There could be 300, 400, up to 500 students. So when you're in a lecture hall, you might feel a little bit, um, you know, it's like, wow, it's a lot of people. But, uh, and you don't get that specific attention from the teacher compared to back in GRC. So my advice is definitely to reach out to your professors day after class, attend their office hour, and definitely make friends in your class to form a study, uh, study group because it will be very helpful in the future to discuss work. And um, for me, when COVID, I was lucky enough to have two full quarters at UDAP in person, but compared to COVID, it's definitely much less motivated for me because I'm basically in my room looking at computer screen, looking at, you know, no human interaction at all. So, um, and also it's very distracting for me because I'm at home. I there's a million things to do compared to when you're in a classroom physically. Um, and but the upside of that is that everything is quite convenient because if you want to attend office hour, it's just a link away and you don't have to commute so you can use that time to do something else. And one thing I really enjoy is having a Discord group for all of my classes. So mm. a lot of students are in a Discord group. So if you have a questions, so you can just write down and then they'll help you right away. Oh so, yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah, like using some of those social technologies to form connections, even though you are online. Sophie, have you had any classes during COVID that were like that 300, 400 size? Yes. Virtually? It was my biochemistry class. Mm. It was hard, but it was online, so that makes it even harder. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. It, how did that look for you as far as like, was it on Zoom and there was just like hundreds of people on the call sort of thing? Yes, but it was at 8.30 a.m. in the morning, so not a lot of people attend. So they have like recordings. So if you okay. miss that, sure it'd still be fine. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. So um, we'll move on to Kai. Kai, how is your academic transition to UW Seattle and what would you like to share? So I think I am still in the process of transitioning. This is only my second quarter in um, UW. And I think my first quarter, I did pretty well, but I just feel like my course load for this quarter is especially heavy, like compared to last quarter. So I. I have to constantly remind myself that, um, you know, you're doing okay and everything is, you know, you're trying your best and that's all that matters. Um, as for how COVID has affected my academics, I feel like surprisingly I have um, gotten better at time management. I, and also I feel like I have more, I kind of like it that I am at home because I'd be able, I'm able to relax and, not have to worry about waking up super early to go up to campus. Um, also, we also have a lot of Discord group chats and I feel like those are very helpful for my classes, especially um, I'm for one of my programming classes that I'm taking this quarter. Uh, it's kind of new to me. And I feel like majority of the people are actually very willing to help. You just gotta ask because everyone's in the same position as you are. Yeah. Interesting. And for the Discord, Kai, were these groups that you dubbed Seattle, like your class created for you or like students in your class decided to create this group, the Discord well, group? The students are the ones that um, took the initiative to do it. And I think that they are all pretty helpful. Also, our class size, it's not that big. I think the, the biggest class I'm in right now in this quarter is 40. So okay. it's manageable um, size of people. Nice. Yeah, I know I, Sophie, I know I've heard from other biochem transfers that, you know, you're going to that intro biochem, so the class is huge. But Kai, you started an, uh, immediately in the Foster School, correct? Yes, I'm doing information okay. systems. 
Okay. So yeah, like that, that might explain that difference in class size. Cause you're already kind of at the junior level coursework. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting about the discord communities and I didn't even think about that. Um, and hopefully that will continue even when you're in person. Cause I think it is a great way to have, you know, connection to your fellow students and to get help um, along the way. But Sophie also mentioned, you know, trying to create a study group just with a few people is a really good idea too. And I know that current Green River students do that as well, especially my science students and I know CS students do it too, because it's so much work. So thank you, Kai, for sharing. Um, Saki, how was your academic transition? So I remember like I had a really hard time trying like how can I say, adjusting myself to the, the classes at UW. Because like I was in my first quarter, I took like a really big class, like with like 400 students in the like a big lecture hall. Wow. And I was so overwhelmed because like, I don't know anyone there. And then also like, you know, we, we I had, I had, I have, how can I say like students and the professors that kind of had like a big distance. And then I felt like, oh, I didn't get as much as much help like as I had in Green River. So I was so worried. And then, yeah, it was, I had a really stressful first quarter. Yeah. And then- And you were in person, right, Saki? Yeah, it was in person. And then I remember like I had a like quiz section, like build up has like a lecture class and quiz section, the quiz section is like usually taught by TAs. And then in the quiz section, we always have to like join the like discussion, like actively like speaking up in the class, like we have to do that to get the like discussion point. And then at the UW, maybe only in my classes, but like most of the students are domestic students. But like in Green River College, I feel that like I had more international students in the same class. So like in Green River, I didn't really have like hard times speaking up because I didn't mm. feel that like nervous. But at the UW, most of them are domestic students. And then sometimes I'm the only, you know, one like international student. And then classes are so hard. And then sometimes I didn't even know what to speak up. So mm. that I had a really hard time. And then in terms of like exams, UW had like so many essay exams that I have to complete within like two hours or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that was so stressful. But somehow I got used to it. <laughs> yeah. So how, how would you say like, how long did it take you? Do you feel like you're still transitioning or do you feel comfortable? Mm, I feel comfortable right now. So like it took me two, two quarters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think because you're a journalism major, we don't see a lot of internet, at least at Green River, we don't see a lot of international students mm -hmm. transfer into that major. So, you know, business, computer science, sciences or like biochemistry, like Sophie, those are pretty common. So yeah. there is maybe more of a international student connection there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so you're, you were a little bit on your own in that regard. Yeah, um, I, but, I can imagine it was okay. overwhelming after being, you know, with a lot of international mm -hmm. students at Green River. Yeah, but like in terms of like pandemic effect, so like I'm taking like journalism classes, right? And then now I have to conduct like every interview online because mm. like it's not safe to like go out and talk to that kind of strangers. So I feel that I'm not getting experiences that like previous journalism students while like having, yeah, that's the kind of sad part. But, but people in my classes are so like friendly and they know like, you know, how to cover like a minority group. So they were so like welcoming like international students. So I don't feel awkward or like, I feel comfortable in that class. Yeah, that's the good thing. That's very good to hear. Yeah, I can imagine it's a difficulty interviewing people for like journalistic pieces over Zoom. Um, but it's just another technology that maybe you can use in the future if you have to. And hopefully at some point you can do it in person. <laughs> so I'm, that's, I'm hopeful for you. 
Well, thank you so much to um, Kai and Sophie and Saki for talking us about your academic transition from Green River to your university. Um, the next question is about uh, describing your social transition to your new school. So how did you connect with other students on campus? How did you get involved on campus? And how did COVID-19 affect your social life and your extracurriculars? So um, Ace, why don't we start with you? Um, can you describe your social transition, please? Oh yes, yeah. so uh, when I first got here, uh, as usual in River College, like I joined a lot of clubs, like made a lot of friends. However, uh, when I first started here, I have in mind that I would join a lot of clubs like just in Green River College. However, during my first quarter, like Saki, like I've struggled a lot with my classes and Adam being, not being able to join any of the club until my third semester. During even my second semester, I have still struggled a lot. And uh, like uh, during the half of the second semester, the COVID struck. And during that time, like everything, the everything changed. I mean, the instruction mode. So it's even, you know, harder to make friends during that time. And to be honest, you know, uh, after second semester, uh, at the third semester, it was while the COVID-19 was happening. During that time, I got a lot of more free time and I was not struggling anymore with the class. So that time I go and like join one of the club. And that club is called IUSM, which is like the fish club or FIS in Green River College. We usually, you know, just hang out, have fun, eat together like that. And they said they usually hang out in a lot of number of people. However, due to this COVID-19, we usually hang out only around like seven people in a group, that's it. And for the like Thanksgiving stuff, instead of hanging out with a lot of people, we usually meet virtually. Like they use the um, online uh, website thing, gathertown.io, I believe. So they deliver food to our house and after that we eat together via Zoom. So yeah, basically that, or what we do. So that's a very creative way of approaching it social is, life and, and group stuff. It so is. you, some, uh, Ace, you said that sometimes you do um, meet in person, but very yes. small groups. Yes. And other times you're all together virtually eating yes, together, correct. socializing. Yes. Okay, nice. Yeah. yeah, and it's interesting how, you know, I totally understand and I hear this a lot that our students find it difficult to transition socially at first because they're so kind of overwhelmed with the academic transition and getting used to their classes and how difficult they may be. So you're certainly not alone in feeling like it was hard to then socialize during your first semester, couple semesters. So in a way, you know, the COVID-19 was an opportunity to, to socialize in a way that maybe you didn't have before, which is interesting, um, kind of like a blessing. In a way, Kai, you know, talking about her own academic transition and how um, in some ways it's been better to be online than in person. I know not everyone feels that way, but I think there have been benefits both socializing and academics, academically for students. Yes, so, yes. Thank you for sharing, Ace. And uh, Kai, going back to you, um, how would you describe your social transition to UW Seattle? I think um, COVID has definitely made it harder for me to socialize, but I was very lucky to find the, this house that I'm living in right now. And we I live with six other people. And I think because of COVID forcing all of us to stay home, we have really bonded in ways that I just feel like wouldn't happen if, you know, if COVID wasn't a thing. Um, also, um, another way I got involved on campus is through work, because right now I work for the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, and I feel like um, I've definitely made a lot of friends there, and they are surprisingly, all of us are surprisingly very entertaining, and we are all, you know, going through this together, and we are all doing social of social events together like we we just we go into the office about once a week and it's it's still it's it's nice to see faces around and i feel like work is where i get a lot of my social activity as well yeah and it's interesting kai I never even thought about um i don't know if any of you grew up with the real world the american television show on mtv but it kind of follows a group of people who live in a house and their social lives. And I never, I didn't actually think about COVID 
and staying at home kind of creating this community in your in your house because some you know in my when I was in college yeah we were in and out of my house a lot so we we'd come together every once in a while but um, it's cool and I'm really happy to hear that you are close to all your roommates and you're connected to them and also to know that even at work you know you're you're getting to go in at least once a week in real time and see human faces, which I think is what we all want right now. <laughs> so I'm happy to hear that that has, um, that you've had that opportunity, which is great. Uh, going along that topic of kind of working and volunteering, a lot of students were interested in any of your work or volunteer experiences. So how did you find them and apply for them? And what was the process like for you? So uh, Sophie, why don't we start with you? Yeah, so um, I'm currently an undergrad researcher at UW Medicine. So um, it's not a paid position. It's more like you sign up for the credits, but it's something that I really enjoy doing because UW is very good at research. It's one of the top for research. So definitely utilize that, reach out to people to find some research opportunity. Um, so, the lab I'm working at is doing about stem cells. So when you go on the website and you can find like UW research opportunity for your major, there will be a list and there will be the name of the name, the name of the professor, what they're studying about. So pick a few that you are interested in, reach out, and you know, keep your options wide because not all of them will be available to you. Um, and one advice I would give you when you do research is to be very hardworking. They'll expect a lot from you. And you know, you can't just, a lot, I know a lot of people give excuses like, oh, I can't be there because of this and that. But for my lab, it doesn't matter if it's the weekend or you have to stay late at night, you just have to be there when you have to be. <laughs> so yeah, um, but it's something I really enjoy because I go there, I see people, I interact with them, I talk to them. So it's kind of like socializing for me in a way and then get to learn a lot of new stuff as well. Um, and as for volunteering, I'm currently volunteering at Bloodworks as the donor experience specialist. So I found this position on, online and um, this is where, because of uh, I'm a pre-med, I really want to have some patient interaction and this position allows me to do just that. So I mother um, donors after they've donated blood, see if they're okay, offer them beverages and snacks. But because of COVID interaction has been cut down to a minimal level. And I also volunteer at Teen Fee. So um, I cook meals and prepare meals there for homeless teenagers. Cooking is something that I really enjoy doing and passionate about. So, you know, why not do something I love for a good cause? Yeah. Nice, Sophie. That's uh, very impressive. Um, how do you kind of manage all of that um, and your classes right now? <laughs> I'm struggling, but um, I volunteer at Bloodworks four hours per week and at the teen fee two and a half hours per week. And at the lab, again, I have to be there whenever they want me to be there. So it could be 10 or 12 hours per week, depending. But time management is the key. So I highly recommend you to write down a planner, like write down, set a time specific time interval for you to finish your task and really stick to that schedule. That's how I manage to get through. Nice. And these are all, all three of these experiences are in person, correct? Yes. So that's good too. I think it's like, you know, it is a lot to kind of take on, but at the same time, it's an opportunity for you to get out and interact with people and be like, whether it's your passions or because of being pre-med. I also had a number of friends who worked in labs and continue to work in labs. And yeah, they were there in the middle of the night, they were there on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So I totally understand that experience. And will you continue to, are you allowed to stay in that program until you graduate? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's great to hear. And well, so thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, go to... ahead, Sophie. Um, my prof for my PI, the principal investigator of my lab, 
if you do a really good job, she might even help you with the OPT uh, process. So, you know, do well, and then you can possibly stay here for your job. That's great. Very good advice for any students who are interested in, in science, any science major for sure, whether that's biology, biochemistry, chemistry, is to look into um, working with a, a PI, a principal investigator at a research university. So very good advice, Sophie. Um, moving on to John. John, would you like to tell us about your work or volunteer experiences? John, you're muted. Just so you know. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No so, worries. Like, so, so far, like during the last three semesters, I've been working with the Office of Information Technology at the University of Minnesota. So, uh, basically, like I help like set up computers to all the pot of the department on campus, ranging from law department to bio math law uh, department as well. And during the uh, COVID, like everyone has to transition to working from home. So when I'm transitioning working home, like I work with like the Zoom support team. So actually like support like virtual event like this. So I was the one behind like hosting events for departments who like have difficulties in set up this meeting or not very tech savvy. I have them with this event. And uh, this semester I uh, stopped working for IT and I, because I just got a undergraduate research assistantship with a professor on campus. And I'm, I'm uh, researching on like testing with like Android apps. So like it involved like, like a lot, like it has a, a very big implication in real life. So like uh, my professor research is focused on like how to better test these apps so that like once they get released, they don't get that many bugs. So like customer, the like user might have like a better experience using this app. And like for finding these uh, position. So for the, uh, unlike in Grover, so for my math tutor and IT help desk position, I heard about it and like apply for it mostly through like, I heard from my friend who knows there could be an opening and like I just uh, asked for application from them and fill out a form. But uh, for at the University of Minnesota, like they have a more like centralized location where they push up all the openings, like job posting in one website. And like everyone just have to go there and like filter out like which position are they interested in that is open and just like fill out like cover letters, resume and like get a job. So like it's more like professional and standardized process for like get a job on campus. and. I think it's kind of nice way because uh, like the student body here is like much larger in Green River and like doing like centralizing up the posting at one location, make it easier for everyone, like for applicants to find a job or like for like employers to like post a posting. They don't, they don't need to monitor a lot of uh, like application like place. And like, but like on the other hand for my uh, research uh, work, so I, uh, there's no like formal way to do this. So like mostly you just need to talk with the instructor that you want to uh, research with and talk to them. Like if they feel you are fit with the position, they will like accept you. So like there's no like public announcement to that. Like you can, the, the only way is like if you are interested in any professor, you have to approach to them like either through office hours during the course or like send them a lot of email with good resume, like build up the connection with them so like they can give you the, the research. And my res uh, undergraduate research is also unpaid, like the same amount as Sophie did. So I took like some credit just for research. So like I got like, I get to reserve time to do research and get credit for it. Nice. Thank you, John. And John, the professor you're doing research with, was he one of or she one of your instructors? Yeah, he was actually my instructor in the fall semester. Yeah. So after that, like, I was like very intrigued with uh, his top like field of research. And like after that, I just sent him a lot of emails over the winter break. And like we went into like some meetings and he gave me like some assessment or some tests and then everything passed and like now I'm like helping him researching. And do you feel that your experiences, you know, your work experiences at Green River and even for the IT department at Minnesota helped you get that assistantship, uh, that research position? That or was it mostly the assessments you had to take? 
Uh, so for the research, I would say not much, but uh, like my position at the IT help desk in Green River, like directly helped me get the job at the IT department here at the U. So like uh, the process, like the way they choose candidates like very strict, like they specifically look for some certain like qualification. And one of those was previous customer service experience. So since I got the IT, I did the IT help desk job at Green River, it like got me like one step into like the job there. Nice. I'm glad. I'm glad that that transition worked for you, and you were able to build upon your experience at Green River. I think that is good advice for current students at Green River is to look for positions. They're kind of fewer and farther between because of COVID nineteen, but we still do have a number of positions that are virtual. So I definitely encourage current students to look into that as well. Thank you, John and um, Sophie, for sharing about your volunteer and work experiences. Um, we are on to our, our final question, um, which is, what is one piece of advice you would give to current Green River College students to be a successful transfer student at their new school? So I'm going to ask this to Kai. Kai, what piece of advice would you give? I would say my piece of advice is um, schedule meetings with the advisor to plan out classes because I think that everyone should take as many core classes as possible in Green River because if you take core classes in your university, it's more likely that the university's classes will be a lot bigger and you won't get enough or like as much support as you would if you were in Green River. So just take all the classes you can and then transfer. Awesome. Thank you, Kai. I know you had agreed to answer this question, but does anyone else have any piece of advice that they would want to share? Anyone else in the, the panelists? Anything you would share with another, with a current Green River College student? Yeah. I'd like to give some advice, like specifically for, for those like transferring to University of Minnesota or in the Midwestern state in general, is that like get a very good uh, jacket because it's really cold here so unlike uh, in seattle like it gets around like 40 30 degree fahrenheit uh, annually but here the average degree is uh, around like zero degree fahrenheit so like it gets really cold in the winter and actually last week we just got be uh, 22 below zero in fahrenheit not in celsius so, wow. so it feel, yeah it feels like and they say like feel like not poor here and yeah and like but it's it's not the worst that people are here they feel like i asked around with a lot of local people and they say like this year is still warmer like than most year here mm. and yeah and even like during the year where we got the polar vortex i think three years ago where like there's a there's a was a lot of no and like we have no classes in Twitter for two weeks here at the u minnesota like people just uh they just stay home for two days and like and like it was like i think minnesota was at the center of that polar protect so again like below 50 i think but like people would still like go to classes as if nothing happened so yeah just like prepare yourself for like an extreme weather and get a very really good jacket it really helps yeah john i think that's a very good point i went to the university of vermont in the northeast super cold i'm from there so i was not shocked at all because i grew up in that type of weather but yeah, when you're considering transferring, definitely look into where it's located and what the weather will be like, because it can be drastically different from Seattle, which is pretty temperate. So thank you for sharing. Does anyone else have any last piece of, of advice they would want to share to current Green River College students? I think we're good. Okay, any questions from the audience? Anyone want to ask a question from the audience? I think. Hello. Hi, Zohar. What's your question? Hi. Oh, my question. Uh, I just want to ask you, how do you guys like consider um, a good application when you guys transfer? Um, so uh, uh, maybe a good GPA, good personal statement, but I think I want some more detail. <laughs> Uh, about like how do you guys apply and what do you think what what um, what factor that you think that make the school accept you guys uh, into the school? Great question, Zohar. Thank you so much for asking. 
So, you know, we did hear from Saki about personal statement was pretty important for the UW application. Um, does anyone else want to uh, mention maybe what they thought, like what kind of combination of factors made them feel like, oh, this is why I was accepted? Maybe I want to ask John or our, our age because they are CS major and I'm a CF major too. Per perfect. <laughs> That's great, Zohar. Yeah, so Ace or John, would, what would you yeah, like to uh, share? I can go for it. So, you know, basically uh, when I transferred from Greenberg College, my GPA is, to be honest, not that good. It was like average. But then also my personal statement was not that good. However, the main thing that sent out was the extra curricular activities. So in Greenville College, I went to a lot of clubs. I attend a lot of those club meetings and like I became a leader of a lot of clubs. So, you know, just um, get to do the uh, extracurricular activities as much as possible and like learn from it and like make sure you talk about it in your application. Yeah. So that's one thing that stand me out. Thank you, Ace, for sharing. John, do you have anything to add to that? Um, I think for CS, uh, I'd say like first, like good GPA is also, it's always a good thing to have. And beside that, like for CS specific major, I would say like have a good foundation in math and uh, mostly math and physics, because like you're gonna use a lot of that uh, during like your major here. And for the application, I think also just put in what Ace did. So I just add in like my personal statement uh, like GPA and like some activities that I have here. And yeah, just like mostly that. And like, since I don't for CS, like I think for the university of Minnesota, it's not as competitive as UW. So if you want to aim for like higher tier school like UW or UIUC, uh, you should like put in some side project like concerning CS, like some coding project that you did like during your free time to really, really showcase like why are you like sending out from other students. I feel like uh, like I only took two CS courses in in Greenville, and that is like uh, I I don't think that is enough to showcase like your ability. You need to do more like besides school to show that. That's a very good piece of advice, John. Yeah, I would I would agree that if you do have if a student is interested in a, in a competitive major at a competitive university, is think about what other type of work you might do outside of school. Um, and especially in CS, doing some of your own um, kind of application work or whatever it might be, coding work, um, can make you stand out. But I also agree with ACE that like, even if maybe your GPA isn't as high as you'd like, or your personal statement, um, getting involved on campus and participating on campus is a very good idea. So it's kind of a balance, to me as an advisor, it's a balance between those elements. Um, for sure. And you can really stand out in any one of those things. Um, so thank you for sharing, John and Ace. Any of the UW students want to add anything to that? Or do we feel like we've, we've covered it? Looks like everyone's pretty good. Okay, well, that is the end of our alumni chat. Uh, we have been chatting for about 50 minutes. I know that's kind of the maximum Zoom time for everyone. <laughs> um, so I wanna thank you all, thank all of our panelists for attending and speaking about their transfer experiences today. I wish you all the best of luck in your studies and in your, um, your OPT, your job search. I know you all will do an amazing job. Uh, you're all excellent students. Um, this is recorded so you can come back and watch it at any time. Um, and thank you so much for coming and we'll say goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.